What's going on, everybody? Here to give you another tutorial. I, uh, this is actually my Darth Vader Xbox that I uh, did the case money for to show you how to cut. And for those of you that watch this, that video, I'll give you a close up on how that turned out. Not too bad, I don't think. Um, now, what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to paint. Um, and uh, typically, uh, I use. Uh, something a little bit different. It's called vinyl dye, and it looks better. It looks like it's not painted. It looks like it's actually meant to be that color, as though it was manufactured in that sort of plastic. I'm kind of getting a little bit rained on here, but that'll be all right. Um, the reason why I'm not going to do that today is because it's not very practical for most people. You have to have a really good tanning area to use vinyl dye. It works the same way. Uh, it paints just like normal paint. Um, but the problem is the smell, and uh, I don't over-exaggerate this. The smell of that stuff is insane. And I, I don't think there's anything else in the world quite like the smell of vinyl dye. Um, so unless you have a very well and a very good ventilated area, a very good place to set up painting, as well as a good face mask, um, which I'll be using as well, um, but it's not as necessary, at least with paint, and uh, uh, you can at least do it around your house and not have everybody in your house and everybody, including your neighbors, complaining about it. Um, as you can see, I have a palm sander here. Um, that's going to be the first step to painting. Uh, when I first started doing this, I didn't sand um, just to try to save time and steps, uh, but that was really stupid. Uh, this does have a finish on it. Um, it may not seem like it, it may not look like it, but it definitely has a finish on it. Um, and getting that finish off there is really going to help the paint stick on there better. Um, there's really no substitute for going ahead and just taking the time to sand it. it I got this palm sander for like 15 bucks. And it's a decent little palm sander. It gets the job done. Um, but you can hand sand it. It's just going to take you a lot more time, and you're going to have to be more careful because you can grind down in it. You can leave a lot more sanding lines, and that will show up in the paint, and, uh, unless, of course, you put several extra coats of paint. So um, I would recommend uh, definitely uh, investing in a little palm sander. And it's great for all the little projects, too, if you need to read it and justify it for you know, something other than just an Xbox. Um, but anyways, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get all the finish off of it. We're going to sand it pretty well. Um, now, I am not going to do a faceplate in this tutorial. I've already got a faceplate, although I am going to do a separate tutorial later for faceplates, uh, just because there's a lot of different little things to do with that. Um, so it's going to take a lot more time. I don't want to make a, an hour-long tutorial video, really. Um, so we're not going to do that. We're also not going to be doing the bottom. Uh, I've already got a bottom for this shell that's already painted. Uh, came off of another shell that didn't work out. Um, so um, just remember, it works all the same. you got to sand it and paint it the same way, so just keep that in mind. Um, but it also is going to help save on a little bit of time for this video. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start sanding it. You just want to make sure to get everything. Uh, you want to get these edges, too, right here on each side. You want to get uh, kind of get back here. This isn't as vital, especially since you may not want to, you know, have to rip all your stickers off and all that. Uh, but you do want to hit it just just ever so lightly. Um, but like I said, it's not as it's not as important, being that it's um, on the back. So let's get this going here. Um, when you've got a design like this, all these cuts make it weak. So don't just put a crap load of pressure on it. It's going to take you a little longer, but it's going to cancel out the risk of you pushing too hard and then breaking some of this stuff out. Because as you can see, like right here and here and here and here, it's really close to the other designs that if it breaks out, I mean, that's just going to look like crap and it's going to be a very sad time for you.
other thing I will say is these areas here are going to bend while you're putting pressure on it, um, and so you're not, they're not going to be as easily sandable. So um, a good thing to do um, if you're not quite sure if you sanded it enough, uh, get you a little pencil and uh, put markings all right around in these areas or whatever your design is and all around here. And then once those are good and gone, um, and I, when, when I say use a pencil, also mark hard on it. Don't just lightly do it. Because if you do it lightly, you can just barely touch it with the sander and it'll be gone. Um, so you want to mark pretty hard and pretty deep in a lot of different areas. And then once all that's gone, you'll know that the finish is gone as well. Typically, there's a lot. If you 
there's this and this. This actually did go all the way across, and there's a bunch of these little uh, plate-looking things going all through here. Um, and you, you're going to want to sand, use your Dremel sanding tool um, to get all that off. You could use a razor blade, but I'm assuming since you already did the cutout, you've already got a Dremel. Um, so using that sanding attachment will easily take all that off, and that way you don't have to mess with it because after it's painted, the less handling you do it, the less chance you can scrape, scratch the paint up. And if you're trying to sit here and grind all that stuff off of here, there's a good chance you could end up putting a scratch in your paint that you just did. Um, and like I said, that's something I've already done. That's all, all nice and clean, so it's going to be ready for me to install the plexiglass after the paint is good and dry. Um, but yeah, that's that. Um, and uh, back to the washing. You need to make sure to get every bit of dust off. Um, you know, just make sure to get all of it off. Wash it real good. Use soap. Uh, and just make sure you get every little speck you can off of there and then let it dry and don't rush it. You know, let it dry for a good 20, 30 minutes. Let it sit out in the sun if that's possible. Um, and uh, give it at least 20 or 30 minutes. And, even, you know, preferably an hour would really be the best amount of time just to make sure. Because if you have any moisture at all when you go to start painting, it's going to be completely ruined and it's going to may even ruin the case because. Once you get moisture underneath paint, um, when you go back and sand it, that moisture will stir up and it'll start messing with the paint, and then you'll have to go through and sand everything a lot. Um, so it's not it's not primal to do that. Um, anyways, I'm going to be doing the washing off camera, and then once this is dry, I'm going I'll cut back in and we'll get to painting. What's up, guys? We're about to do the uh, painting tutorial. Uh, Got everything nice and clean and dry, um, so we're ready to do this. Um, hopefully, I don't get paint all over my camera. I couldn't figure it out a good place to put the camera. So, um, anyways, we're using Krylon today. For, um, this is specifically for plastic. Um, this stuff is a lot more expensive than regular paint, but it is a lot more worth it too. So, um, yeah. Uh, I think this costs about five bucks a can, whereas you can probably get the cheap, some cheap stuff for about a dollar. But uh, I wouldn't recommend that. All right, now first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit the edges so we can get the sides up real well. some light coating across here. Now notice what I'm doing. I'll, I'll explain it a little bit better after I do this coat. If you notice, I'll spray and then I'll let go once I get to the end. That helps you get better control and it helps the coat stay a lot more even. You just want to cover it basically, and then that's going to be the first coat there. Um, now we'll come back and we'll do the next coat here in a few minutes. Um, but what I was doing there, um, I would uh, I'd hit it when I'm going across, and then I'd let go right there, and then I would hit it, hold it down, and then let go once you get to the end. Because if you hold it when you go across, you'll end up getting uneven coats. Um, to be honest, I can't explain why. But it does happen, and I've tried it both ways, and I get runs a lot more in the paint when I do it that way. Um, so anyways, we're going to let this dry for about uh, maybe 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll do a second cup. All right, it's been about, it's actually been about 15 minutes. Uh, just got done raining not too long ago, so I didn't really uh, want to chance it too much. Um, so I gave it an extra couple minutes. Uh, now we're going to do the second coat. Just going to do the same thing we did before, and uh, same technique where you only spray when you're right on top, and you let go when you get to the edges. Um, you don't really need to hit the uh, very edges again. Those are pretty good after just that initial spray. Remember you. 
you're going to want kind of light coats, especially if you've got it like me and it's hanging there like this. If you had it flat, you can maybe do a little bit thicker, but it's just easier for me to do it this way. And it's going to help protect it from any dripping water from the rain that just happened because I'm right underneath an awning here. Couple more sprays here. All right, that'll be good for that coat. And then I'll come back in another 15 minutes and do a third coat. And that'll probably be my last coat. All right, guys, it's been about a good another 15 minutes. I'm gonna do another coat on this. This may or may not be my last coat. I haven't made up my mind yet. Um, but this will be the last coat I show on the video. So we're going to do the same thing we did before, just make sure it's a light enough coat where uh, you won't get runs. Looks like it's done pretty well alright, not getting any runs. Uh, hopefully the humidity won't affect it any. Doesn't look like it is though. Uh, one other thing I will say when you've got cutouts like this, Make sure you angle it a little bit around. That way you won't end up with white spots down on the inside because those are definitely visible. So just make sure you hit it from a few different angles to make sure you've got all those those little areas filled in with paint. Because um, it's kind of annoying to do all that work and then you'll see white places where you've cut out the case. And uh, that's definitely very frustrating. That's all I'm going to do there. Yeah, I don't want to push it. Yeah, that's all I'm going to do on that coat. I'll, I'll probably do another coat, though. But anyways, guys, I appreciate you guys checking out this tutorial. Um, when this console is finished, I will definitely be making a showcase of it. So uh, make sure to subscribe and check out my videos. That way you can see what it looks like when it's all done. Have a good one.